I smile as I go past the dumping stations and see everyone cleaning out their family's poop and know that I don't have to mess with that. <laughs> Hello everyone! I thought I'd talk a little bit on my cargo trailer build, and what I like and don't like, and things I'd do differently if I had to do it all over again. If you haven't already checked out my cargo trailer overview video, I'll put a link right here so you can get an idea of everything I've done to it. We're here in northern Indiana, it's two days after Thanksgiving, and it's about 33 degrees, but the cargo trailer is nice and warm, I got the propane heater on, so let's go out there and finish this thing up. I've used this trailer on multiple camping trips and off-road adventures this summer, and I've decided there are a few things I wish I would have done differently. So here goes. The biggest thing I wish I would have done differently is buy a slightly larger trailer. One reason I went with a smaller trailer is I live in a subdivision and I plan on parking the trailer right next to the house. I didn't want it to be an eyesore for the neighbors. We don't have an HOA but I still didn't want to be that guy that junks his yard up with a bunch of stuff. Secondly, I wanted something easy to tow as I have a mid-sized truck, a Tacoma, and also an SUV. I've got a Highlander. The trailer weighs about 3,900 pounds with the side-by-side -side in it and ready to camp. 850 pounds is tongue weight, which is way too high. It's something like 22% tongue weight. We should be around 10 to 13% uh, of the total cargo trailer weight should be the ton weight. So I added a distribution hitch. That cost me about 850 bucks, but it seems to handle a lot better. As far as gas mileage though, this thing's awful. With the Tacoma, I usually get about 19 miles to the gallon on the highway. Uh, however, with the trailer, I'm lucky to get 10 miles to the gallon, which I guess isn't too bad, but it's not what I expected going into this. I would like to either replace the 3,500 pound axle with a 5,200 pound Dexter with brakes or perhaps add a second 3,500 pound axle with brakes. This trailer would definitely benefit from brakes and actually should have it since it's over 3,000 pounds. Having said all that, I would much rather have bought a 7x14 all aluminum trailer with dual axles and brakes. That extra two foot would have been extremely nice to have. I could have went larger with the beds and made this build a lot more suitable for a family of four. If you're just doing a trailer to camp in and not haul a side-by-side, -side, this current size would be perfect. It would also be great for some dirt bikes or a smaller quad, but for a side-by-side, -side, this could stand to be a little bit larger. Let's talk toilets. I don't think this is a crappy setup at all. Half the time I am camping at a place with modern restrooms, so we barely even use this. However, it's nice to have an option inside your trailer for when you need to use the restroom in a hurry. I smile as I go past the dumping stations and see everyone cleaning out their family's poop and know that I don't have to mess with that. Even with a cassette toilet, you have to deal with cleaning out waste. This trash bag kitty litter system works great for me and my family, and I'm very happy with it. While on the subject of plumbing, I think I will be changing the pump on the sink. These little pumps only cost around $12, but the little internal batteries that are rechargeable don't hold up well to extreme temperature swings, and I'm already on my second unit. If that were to fail during a camping trip, it'd be pretty inconvenient. I do have a small 12 volt water pump that's made for RVs that I bought years ago. And since I have got this 12 volt setup already, I'm thinking I'm gonna just hook it up into the system and just use a more of a standard faucet. Let's talk about money for a second. This cargo trailer cost about $3,800 out the door, just for the cargo trailer. By the time I got done doing all my renovations to it, the solar panels, the air conditioner, the uh, distribution hitch, the floor, everything, I've got almost $7,000 in this trailer. Still, I don't think it's too bad when you consider that an RV manufactured trailer that is a toy hauler is going to be way over $20,000. Let's talk power. I really like my solar setup. 
With the exception of the air conditioner, I run the entire trailer off a of 12 volt, and I like the simplicity. One thing I already changed is how I mounted the solar panels. At first I mounted them directly to the roof, but I have since changed that and I mounted them to a rack system that I made that actually mounts to the sides of the trailer instead of the roof. I have two 100 amp hour SLA batteries, which is plenty for my needs. About half the time where I camp, there's electrical hookups, so I don't even use a solar. I almost wonder if my money would have been better spent buying huge lithium ion batteries like a used Tesla car battery and just skipping the solar altogether. That would have saved a lot of headaches mounting the panels and running the electrical wires. If you're planning on being in your trailer for weeks at a time, the solar is great to have, or if you're primarily boondocking for weeks at a time, I should say. But honestly, all the camping trips I've done have been three nights and under, and an SLA or a lithium ion battery uh, charged up would have been great. About the beds, they are disco beds, which are very comfy, cozy, and break down to fit the side by side in. However, it is a pain to have to set these things up every time we get to camp, and then after a long weekend of riding, I have to break them all down again. I just want to go home. What I rather would have done is build beds that store up in the ceiling and just slide into place. Maybe a bed that cranks down like others have done would have been a great way to go. That way the beds would be already made and ready to sleep in as soon as you put them down into place. Let's turn up the heat and talk about this Mr. Buddy heater. I have this Mr. Buddy heater that's hooked up to a 20 pound propane tank on the tongue of my trailer. This has served me very well. However, I'd love to have a setup that has a thermostat with it that would automatically control the temperature so in the middle of the night if it gets too hot or too cold it would uh, properly adjust itself. I also have a few safety concerns with the Mr. Buddy heater. Although I've watched video after video of people and firefighters and everyone telling you that it's safe, um, that it can be safe, I, do, I still have my concerns as far as carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, gas leaks, or um, even this thing when it has combustion it's using up some of the oxygen that we're trying to breathe at night. Those concern me a little bit and I think if I had to do it again and I had the money I'd go with a Propex heating system or one of those uh, Chinese diesel heaters that actually have the combustion outside of the trailer and it has its own air intake and exhaust. In closing, I love the idea that I can haul my side-by-side -side out to play, then make camp in the same trailer that brought it there. I spent nights in this where it rained so much you thought you were in Noah's Ark and about to float away. I've had days it was in the 90s, I've had nights that were below 30, and I've always felt safe, dry, and secure in here. I look forward to many more trips with my family and friends, uh, playing around in this trailer and the great outdoors. I think I'll wrap up this video for now. If you're into cargo trailer builds and like seeing more of this content, please consider subscribing and give us a like. I'll try to do more of these videos as I upgrade my trailer in the future. Thank you for watching.